Hello and welcome to another video on DAX. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at same period last year. My name is Mitchell Pearson and I hope you enjoy this video. With same period last year, behind the scenes, what's going on? We're going to talk about that. We're also going to take a look at the fact that this is a repeatable pattern that gets used over and over again. And because it's a repeatable pattern, we can actually put this into a calculation group and save ourselves a lot of coding effort and make this a lot easier. The other thing I want to talk about is uh, marking this as a date table. So one of the things I see very, very often is people write the DAX correctly. The results don't seem correct. They rewrite it 10 different ways. It still doesn't work. What's going on? Sometimes you got to mark it as a date table to make this work. So those are the concepts we're going to take a look at here as we dive into same period last year. So let's jump over to Power BI desktop and take a look. So this is going to be the DAX that we use. We're going to say calculate our expression, right? Evaluate an expression, which is going to be an aggregation. Evaluate sales, evaluate profit, evaluate profit margin for the same period that I'm at last year. So if I'm at the day level, go back to last year, get the value of that total sales or profit or profit margin for one year ago. If I'm at the month level, right? If my period is at the month level, go back to the month level one year ago and get my total sales, my profit, my profit margin, whatever it is that I'm measuring for one year ago. So that's the expression we're going to be using. We're using calculate to evaluate an expression within a modified filter context. So now we can jump over to our kind of pre-built report that I already have up and running, of course, to save time. And in this report, I just basically have the year, the month, and then the total sales. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to add to this a measure I've already created, which is our prior year total sales. And in fact, we'll look at it first. We'll look at the measure first. And then after we've looked at that measure right here, then we'll put it in the chart and kind of look at it. But this is a very simple way of doing time series analysis. Calculate my total sales for last year. Calculate my profit for last year. The reason I mentioned that this is a pattern is, uh, and, and I'll teach a class, I'll teach a DAX bootcamp. You know, we go through multiple days and I get to the end. I'm like, oh, show me how to get uh, prior year, year to date sales. And it's unbelievable how many people are stumped, right? Because they don't see the pattern in this. But you'll notice this is calculate total sales, same period last year. If I want, I could replace this total sales with profit, calculate profit for last year. I could replace it with year to date sales. So if I have a year to date sales and I want to see last year, year to date sales compared to this year, Calculate year-to-date sales for last year. Calculate profit margin for last year. This is a pattern that can be reused over and over again. Now, maybe you don't want to write 15 different variations of this for each of your measures. You want a simpler method. Well, that's where calculation groups come in. We're going to talk about that here at the very, very end. But let's take a look at this. So we have our prior year sales simply saying evaluate this expression within a modified filter context, which is taking the current filter going back one year and returning the results for that period. So now I'm going to grab that prior year sales and we are going to drop it right here in our table and we'll take a look and you'll notice that for July I'm getting 473,000 and if I go back and I look at this period, the month back in 2005, we're getting the same exact results right there. And so quick little validation here, it works. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that this is same period last year. So this works at the day level. If I were looking at, you know, if I was looking at July 15th, we could go back to July 15th of 2005 and it would be for the 15th of 2005 for that day level. If we're at the month level, it works at the month level. If we're at the quarter level, it works at the quarter and the year level. So this is very, 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 one more very, very dynamic, right? This is very dynamic. Now, um, one thing that we would want to do to make time intelligence work is going to depend a little bit on your relationship. So if I come over to my relationship between the date table and internet cells, we will see that my relationship has been built on the date key, which is an integer value. It's not an actual date. It's an integer value. And so I've built my relationship on the date key. This is generally recommended as a best practice, although many people would have built the relationship from the date column to the order date. If you build it from the date column to the order date, you can get away with not marking your date table as a date table for time intelligence functions and it works. And so a lot of times when I'm explaining to people that, hey, we've built a relationship on our date key and because we've built a relationship on our date key, 
we need to go mark the table as a date table. And they're like, well, I've never had to do that. And it works. I'm like, well, you're probably using, historically speaking, in Power BI Desktop, not Tabular, not Power Pivot, but in Power BI Desktop, we've always done it that way. We've always built a relationship on the date. But you know, if you build it on the date key, you can mark it as a date table and that will make sure that that time intelligence works. And so the way we mark it as a date table is you can right click on the date. So I'm back in the report view. You right click on the date, you say mark as date table, and then you click on that. Now you'll notice that mine is already marked as a date table. So therefore it works. But if I were to disable this and turn it off, this calculation right here would actually be blank all the way down. And so I'm not going to do that, but I'm just telling you about it because this is where I see a lot of new people, dashboard in a days, brand new to Power BI, introduction to DAX. You know, they're just, they just don't know and you get stuck. And I've gone and done, you know, uh, engagements with customers where I get there and they're like, I've been trying to fix this for three weeks. What's going on? And then I'm like, oh, you just need to mark it as a date table. So that can be a little bit frustrating, but that's exactly what's going on there. Now, I said this is a repeatable pattern, right? So let's take a look at that repeatable pattern. We've done prior year sales. Let's take a look at prior year profit, prior year profit margin. So I've built another one in here that we can quickly look at. And this is prior year profit. And you'll notice that we're saying calculate our profit for the same period last year. We're doing it again. This is once again, a repeatable pattern. Now what's going on with same period last year? Hopefully you've made it, you know, five, six minutes into this video. What's going on with same period last year, Mitchell. I don't want same period last year. I want same period two years ago. I want same period three years ago, or I want, I want to be able to look at last year or two years ago and three years ago, all in one cell. Well, the great thing about same period last year is that it's derived from the date add function and the date add function has a lot of functionality. So let's take a look at creating a new calculated measure here. That's going to give us our prior year cells, but we're going to use date add instead. And then once you've seen how data add works, you can easily modify it to go back two years, three years at the quarter level, at the month level. And so there's a lot of flexibility that we get with that specifically. And so we're going to create a new measure here and then we'll call this measure. Let's think, uh, we'll call it prior year sales, make that a little bit larger right there. We'll go with prior year sales and then I'll tack on the function that we're using data add on the end. So we know which, which one we're using here. And of course this part's going to be pretty self-intuitive, right? We want to return total sales. So return total sales, that expression within a modified filter context. So return total sales within the current filter context or within a modified filter context rather. And we're going to use date add this time. So instead of using same period last year, we use date add. We're going to provide the date column from our date table. We're going to go back one interval. We could go back more and then we go back at the year level. And what this does is this gives us the exact same functionality as same period last year, because same period last year is a simplified version of this, right? Uh, keep in mind, you notice right here at the interval level, we can go back at the day, month, quarter, or year. So there's a lot of options here, but we're going to focus specifically on the year to match what we have in same period last year. And then I'll add another closing parenthesis, hit enter, and I'll format this real quick. And then we can throw this into a table and uh, we'll see exactly what that looks like and how it compares. Even though my existing one doesn't seem to have that same formatting. And so here we go, right? You see that the number is exactly the same. It's doing the same thing. The big thing about this new measure that we created is that it has more flexibility. You can go back two years or three years, but of course, same period last year is the most common. It's the most popular. So Microsoft simplified that, but there isn't a same period last quarter function. And so in, in future videos, I really want to dive into this and talk about same period last year versus previous year, date add versus parallel period, because uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that goes on with that and understanding the difference between them. But as we've mentioned, what we've done so far is a repeatable pattern, return an expression within a modified filter context, return an expression, same period last year, return total sales, same period last year, return profit, profit margin, total transactions, all of that for same period last year. And you look at your measures over here and you say, look, I got 15 or 20 different measures. I don't want to have to write 20 or diff, you know, 20 different measures to kind of fill that void here. And so I'm going to clean up this table just a little bit, dropping that I'll get rid of, you know, let's say prior year sales, we'll drop that. And I'm going to take a look at something called calculation groups. Now, this is not the first time I've delved into the world of calculation groups on a YouTube video. And it's important to reemphasize the importance of this because I can create one measure, one, that will automatically be able to determine what is in the visualization and apply a new filter context to that. So it'll take this total sales that you see right here. 
and it'll change it to prior year total sales. It'll take the profit that's in here and change it to prior year profit. It'll take the quantity and change it to prior year quantity, one measure. But the way we do that is through external tools and through the tabular editor. And so over here under external tools, I'm gonna launch the tabular editor. The tabular editor is a tool that is not part of Power BI Desktop, right? So if you're thinking, oh, this is part of Power BI Desktop, it is not. This is not part of Power BI Desktop. Um, this is a special download. And so I've talked about this in another class, uh, obviously, as well, uh, or another video that I've done. I've talked about this there as well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new table. Whenever you create a calculation group, it's going to be a table. What you need to do is install the tabular editor. I'll give you the link in the comment section of this video. Install the tabular editor, close out Power BI, open it back up, and it should pop up for you automatically, especially if you're on the newest version of Power BI Desktop. If you're on an older version, you might have to go into, and keep in mind, this is a newer feature that today is, you know, we're in November of 2020. This is a newer feature that's come out in the last few months. So if you're on, you know, the February version, you're not going to have this functionality. But if you're on, you know, September version, you might have to go into the preview, preview options, and turn on enhanced metadata as a preview option to get this to work. But in the newer versions, that is no longer in preview. So you should be able to just install Tabular Editor and go through the demo that I'm doing. But I'm going to right click on model, create new, and I'm creating a new calculation group. I want to give this calculation group a name. So we'll call this something like, you know, prior year calculations. That's going to be the name of a table that shows up in our data model. Then I'm going to right click here and say, I want to create an item within this table. So this is going to be our measure. And this measure is going to be, I'm going to create two. Um, if we're doing prior year, we'll call this one current year. All right. So current year, that's going to be our current measure, current total sales, current profit, current whatever. So we're going to do a current year and you'll see why this is important. And I'm just going to type in here selected measure. In other words, this, this result right here is always going to turn whatever, return whatever the default value is. Whatever the value of that measure is, just go ahead and return the value. You'll see why this is important in a minute. And then we're going to create another calculation item here, and this will be called um, prior year. Right? So we have current year and we have prior year, so we can see them side by side. And then prior year is simply going to be, let's see, calculate. And then we're going to calculate our selected measure, whatever the selected measure is. And we're going to calculate that selected measure for same period last year. So selected measure is the dynamic part here that says, hey, take whatever the measure is that's selected and perform, you know, evaluate its return, the value of it within this new modified filter context. So same period last year, date column from my date table. Common mistake is I always forget that second parenthesis, but not today. And then when you're done, um, that's really it. Now you can also give this calculation a name, which I thought I did, but I must have messed that up. So we'll call this one prior year down here. And then for the column of the table, I'm going to rename that as well. And I want to rename that to simply, you know, prior year calculations, right? So I know what I've brought into the table and how it's being modified. So prior year calculations. And so this is the steps that you would go through. You can do the same thing repeatable for role playing dimensions, like the other video that I did for year to date type calculations, year over year, year over year growth. And, and essentially it's a way of creating one measure instead of creating one measure for every measure you have. So if you have 20 measures, you'd have to do this 20 times. Now we only do one. So we've done the hard part. Now we go up to the top right here and we say, you know what, let's go ahead and save those changes to our Power BI report. We save it. I'll slide this guy over here and then let's see what we got. So we'll go ahead and do a quick little refresh here. And then over here in our um, field section, you'll see we have a new table. And from that table, I'm going to grab that column. And actually, you know what we need to do? We need to go ahead and change this over to a matrix. And so we'll change this to a matrix, move the month back into uh, this portion of that matrix. And then let's bring in our column from that new table. We'll drop it right here on the columns. And what just happened is it is now showing us our current year for that total sales and it's showing us our prior year. And you can validate it right here side by side. If you didn't add in that current year item, then you would only see the prior year and a lot of questions. A lot of times people are like, oh, how do I get that original value? This is how you would do it. Just type selected measure and you're good to go. Now this is total sales. You say, well, how, would this work for profit and profit margin and total transactions? And the answer is yes. Watch this. If I get rid of total sales and we go over to internet sales over here and we grab something like total cost, 
Now I'm getting my current year cost and we're getting our prior year. And if we change this with something, actually let's add another one. We'll add two measures in here at the same time. What happens then? Total quantity, you see both. Watch this, we'll extend it a little bit. So now you see your current year, total cost, total quantity, and you see your prior year. This is a beautiful way of being able to take those repeatable patterns in DAX and simplify the number of measures that you have to write. All right, that's gonna end this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, like, subscribe, send it to your friends. I don't even care if they know what Power BI is. Send it to your, your mom, your dad, your uncle, your aunt, your kids. Let them watch this video. Uh, and until next time, thank you and have a good week.